So one way that I'm going to talk about later is that erectile dysfunction affects the partner's sexual behavior, which in turn will exacerbate the problem. The second case is when the relationship characteristics, the characteristics of the way that the couple interacts will influence erectile dysfunction. The third is a case where erectile dysfunction is actually caused by the relationship. And the fourth is a case where erectile dysfunction actually maintains the relationship. It's because of erectile dysfunction it, that these two people are still together. And the fifth is a case where the relationship will sabotage your therapy. All right, so we'll start with the first case. So this is a case when the man's erectile dysfunction affects the sexual behavior of the partner and her, sex and her behavior will then uh, influence the, the problem. So she is thinking, I'd rather not express my desire uh, because it will cause him anxiety. I will not initiate or will not show him that I want to have sex because if I do show him then he might become more stressed about it. So I'd rather wait for him to initiate our sexual encounters. So she stops herself from expressing her desire for him. So what do you think he will then think? Well, he will think that she doesn't want me anymore, she doesn't like me anymore, because she never tells me that she wants to have sex. So this way, his problem may actually be, uh, become even um, more exacerbated, all right? This is an old study that I, I always like to mention because this is something that we very, very often see in clinical practice. And what we see here, these were couples that um, sought treatment for erectile dysfunction. And they asked them, how long has it been since, since the last time that you kissed? And that was approximately 30 months. How long has it been since the last time you caressed, so you touched at each other? And that was, again, approximately 30 months. This means that when we do have a sexual problem like erectile dysfunction, this usually has a domino effect. So they stop having any sort of intimacy or sexual activity that doesn't necessarily involve the erection. So we need to take this into account when we're treating people with erectile dysfunction. We can't just give them a medication and expect them to start having sex the next day when they haven't touched each other for two years. This now is a case where the relationship characteristics, the way these people interact, maintains erectile dysfunction. So erectile dysfunction could have been caused by anything else. So she is saying, I'm sure you've, you've had couples like this in your office at some point. Oh, I won't let it go and treat it. I will find a solution. I will take you to the best doctor. I will make sure you get the best therapy possible. So she's being quite dominant here. And he's thinking, oh, I'll do whatever you tell me. You know best. So what kind of interaction do you see here? Would you ever expect that this man is one day going to feel confident? <laughs> she is having such a leading role even in the treatment. So I would personally think that he's never going to feel confident enough. So she's been too dynamic and he's been too passive and this can actually maintain the problem. This is a study by Pedro Nover that showed that when a man believes that he is incompetent, he is much more likely to report um, experiencing erectile dysfunction. Okay? Now this is another case. This is a case where the relationship is the only cause of erectile dysfunction. Okay? So she is talking about something that has nothing to do with sex. She is saying, oh, you didn't bother telling me that you would apply for a new job. You didn't think it was worth sharing with me. So she's quite, she feels very offended because he applied for a job and he didn't discuss it with her. And he's thinking, oh, I expected you to be happy with my new job. It seems I always do things the wrong way. So here we have an issue that is not sexual, 
it has caused them some conflict. Do you think that these people will now have desire to have sex? So in everyday life, couples are often um, in situations where they feel disappointed or they feel negative emotions one for the other. I think this is part of our normal life. And sometimes when these increase and they, they become very frequent, they will affect our sexual uh, life and sexual desire. So in these cases, we would expect that relationship conflict is the cause of erectile dysfunction. Now we have some research that has shown that there are some ways that couples interact, and these ways are very destructive for our uh, relationships and for our love life. So these are the four characteristics of these patterns of interactions that are not positive. One is criticism. So for example, the, the, the man was supposed to take the garbage out and he did it. So the partner is criticizing him, saying, oh, um, yeah, you, you never take the garbage out. I mean, you're, you're so lazy to do that. So this is normal criticism that most of us know of what it is. The second pattern of interaction is content. This is even worse. Women are very good at this, I think, because this is a case where we're being quite mean with the other person and we are showing that the other person is not only doing things the wrong way, but he's inferior and we're, we're better than them. So in other words, you never do anything wrong, for example, so you're really showing that the other person is inferior. Defensiveness, on the other hand, is a case where somebody is constantly uh, responding as if he's the victim. Uh, again, in this case, the person is not actually confronting, but he's pretending to be the victim. Oh, you know, you always complain and never do anything right, do I? And stonewalling, which I see very often in men with erectile dysfunction, is a case where somebody is, instead of confronting a, a negative situation, he just withdraws. So he responds as if he's not actually looking at the other person or uh, as if he's not there. This is a case where we see men um, not responding to whatever the partner is saying and the partner then becomes even more frustrated with the situation. Now this is a different case because this is a case where erectile dysfunction is actually maintaining the relationship. So we have a lady here, she is actually uh, turning 36, so she wants to move on with the relationship, she wants to have, um, you know, to get married and have a child. And he is thinking, but he is not saying that he wants her, but he's, he's not sure he wants to have a family yet. So if this man confronts and if he says out loud what he's thinking, then he's in trouble because she will probably separate him. So if on the other hand he moves on, he will probably find himself with a family which he doesn't want yet. So in this case, erectile dysfunction could actually be a solution that will maintain the relationship for him. Because, you know, I think that it, for most people, conflicts are there. We, we have to deal with conflicts all the time in our daily life because with our partners, we're, we may have many similarities, but we also have a lot of differences. And we usually don't like to, to deal with differences. That's, that's what makes it quite tough. And when we do have conflict, in most cases, this is also reflected in the way we, we respond sexually. Now, this is a study by the team of um, Mario Maggi that it was, it, there was a very big sample of approximately 4,000 patients. Um, and what this study showed was that there, the couples that had that were dealing with conflict in their relationships were also, they also had high scores in anxiety and they also had high scores in sexual dysfunctions. This is the case where the relationship 
will actually sabotage our therapy. Because this is a case where the man comes for treatment with his partner, but the lady is now in love with somebody else. So now that he decided to seek treatment, it's too late for her. And if we don't know that, then we're probably struggling for nothing. So this is another interesting study about cheating. Um, this is interesting because 44% of men and 33% of women reported infidelity. Now, it, so that's approximately one fifth of, our, of the sample. One fifth of the sample said that they were in a monogamous relationship, but they had cheated with their partner. Now, these are factors that were associated with being more likely to cheat on the wife for men. So what was that these men were high in sexual excitation. In other words, to explain it for you, these are men that um, they score high because they, um, they can get easily aroused and they like being aroused by other women and so on. So they're high in sexual excitation. What was very, very interesting is that men who had a high score in sexual inhibition due to threat of performance failure were actually more likely to cheat on their partner. So men who were more likely to be afraid that their sexual arousal will be blocked because they will have a, an erection problem, these men were more likely to cheat on their partner. At the same time, men that were not that afraid, that were not so afraid that their erection will be blocked by the possible consequences of their act. So in other words, they were not afraid that somebody might see them, so, you know, that somebody might find out about what's going on. These men were also more likely to report infidelity. And of course, men that were more anxious were more, uh, were, uh, this was a predictor of male infidelity. The, the, the picture was quite similar for women as well, okay? So we didn't have a lot of differences. So sex in a long-term relationship is quite complex and it's much, much more complex than it is than in a short-term relationship. Because in real life and in long-term relationships, the couples have to deal with so many issues. They have to take care of a household, they have to take care of the children, maybe they have to take care of the elderly. They have so many things to coordinate and uh, so many problems to solve in, a daily, in their daily life. So they need to help each other and one is depending on the other. Obviously this can cause a lot of difficulty which is reflected in their sexual life. And actually if you have a look over here, a Google search on tips for sex in long-term relationship yielded 82 million results. <laughs> so the key point is basically that sexual problems are always linked to the relationship. Thank you.